So uh, today, you know, we'll start with the information gathering phase. Okay, first we'll discuss about the uh, pre-engagement phase, right? Then after that, we can you know directly get into the uh, information uh, gathering phase, guys. I'll share my screen. Uh, just a minute. Okay, let me first uh, you know help you to understand the process, right? So what happened? What happens when you start your uh, you know assessment, right? Before the assessment, um, usually there will be a, there will be an NDA, okay, non-disclosure agreement, which will be signed between your client and uh, you know your organization where you'll be working. Then after that, we'll be connecting uh, in a meeting. You know to just understand the um, you know scope of the target like how many applications how many uh, like what type of a network we are going to test it how many ip addresses are are the internal or external what is their objective of performing this uh, testing okay um, like all the questions guys all the required questions like timeline point of the contact depending on their uh, testing type you know will gather all the information in that particular uh, call itself then afterwards we'll start uh, with our assessment right so <clears throat> yeah hope you can see my screen right Yes. Yeah. Right. So the first the first phase is planning and preparation, guys. So here first we need to understand the scope. Right. Like um, what is these systems, networks, application that needs to be assessed or test. We need to determine the depth and breadth of the uh, yeah. testing activities. Then decide whether the test will be covered internal, external, or both network perimeters. So we have the internal uh, pen testing where we'll be sitting inside the network and performing the assessment. External assessment, like you'll be sitting outside the network and assessing it. And then you have both uh, network perimeters, like we'll be focusing on uh, internal external as well as the uh, network perimeter devices like firewalls okay uh, routers um, yeah, load balancers okay ids ips kind of uh, uh, devices right so first after completing the nda we need to understand the scope then objective of the testing right why i mean what exactly reason you know, they, that they are you know uh, asking us to assess the um, target right so establish a clear goal for the assessment okay either they are looking for us to uh, identify the vulnerabilities or are they focusing on testing the incident response team okay i mean if there is any incident happens how they are going to respond response to those incidents or evaluating the security controls which they have already in the place you know whether they are uh, you know suitable for the prop suitable for the correct network or not or did they need to have any kind of improvements to uh, Im improvements in, in the network right and define the success criteria for the engagement i mean if you have the expectations uh, properly so we'll be able to perform this engagement okay by me by meeting their expectations and that will become a success right and determine the testing boundaries okay make sure you properly take the scope okay either it could be ip addresses domains subdomains applications okay so we have to first you know take the in scope uh, assets which we are going to perform the assessment then <clears throat> out of the scope assets which we are not going to perform the testing, right? If you are clear with this uh, in scope and out of the scope, 
okay like we, we will be not much spending the time on the out of a scope out of scope uh, things to avoid the uh, vulnerabilities anyway if you identify something in the out of scope also there is no use right sometime if it is let's say critical systems which are added as a part of the out of scope and when you are accidentally uh, going and assessing them there could be an impact as well right to avoid those ac accidental impacts on the production systems uh, you know we should not touch any out of the scope assets only work on the in scope assets which are given part of the okay scope okay this is very very important guys uh, of course even these kind of a questions you can directly uh, ask them or if you have a list of questions the same kind of a questions in the maybe confluence or in the excel you can just uh, send them the questions let them come back with the answers okay according to that you can schedule a meeting and uh, clarify the things and legal and compliance consideration right so as you know the pen testing assessment is the uh, you know ethical hacking like uh, approach where we take the proper permissions of the uh, owner right so to not to have any kind of a uh, legal uh, cons I mean, issues later it is good to you know go and first to take the nda right we have to first to sign the nda non disclosure agreement and, and also sign the uh, you know i mean take the con take the written permissions from the stakeholders or the system owners before we start the engagement and also make sure uh, follow the compliances right every organization may be uh, falling under one or the other regulatory uh, compliance ensure that the testing activity complies with the relevant laws and regulations for an example if i wanted to give one example over here okay let's say you are assessing the um, uh, you know gdp you are assessing the europe client where there is a gdpr is uh, applicable or maybe let's say you are assessing the uh, finance institution where pcrdss is applicable so what happens let's say uh, as per the gdpr uh, the data should not go uh, you know out of the europe but if if you are sitting in india that is not part of the compliance right so they might provide you the virtual um, systems to you okay which are hosted on their network itself you cannot download anything you cannot uh, steal any i mean get the information to your local host so that will be part of a compliance and you use those systems only to perform the assessment right by following the uh, compliance got my point so such a kind of a things also we need to understand right yeah <clears throat> then the rules of an engagement so we should establish a very clear line of a communication between the testing team and the client team okay by choosing uh, communication protocol so mostly it will be email communication only right and also ask them what type of a, a report that they are expecting right because that's what the output we are going to hand over to them so just show them the report structure if you have some sample reports i mean if they ask you to uh, create a customized report you know some something which may not look uh, satisfied to them maybe you can take a sample template also from them okay what kind of a uh, uh, information that they are expecting in that report so as per that only we have to create the report with adding all our findings and inform them and also know the limitations there are certain times where i mean they won't allow you to perform you know most of the time not certain time most of the time they don't allow you to perform the automated attacks for an example they don't allow you to run the brute force attack they don't allow you to perform a denial of a service attack right so 
also make sure that you know inform them that whether this particular type of an automated attacks are allowed or not right i mean ask them what type of attacks that are prohibited during the testing so they will give us a list of attacks that needs to be excluded right so we should not go and perform those attacks mostly when you're testing a black box assessment it could be white box also uh, maybe if you're testing something on the uit if you do some kind of an automated attack automatically the server will go down the other testers will have the issue they won't be able to access it again either application again might needs to be reset it the server needs to be again you know restarted there should be a point of a contact you know who should be available for you to help it out on that particular certain uh, particular time let's say if you're doing on the friday then if he is in leave we cannot do anything right so that's the reason we should not cross our limitations and we should not perform any kind of an attacks which are prohibited during the testing right yeah and also set the guidelines uh, for handling the sensitive data discovered during the test sometimes uh, let's say uh, the day one itself let's say you started the uh, assessment today itself and you have identified the very critical issue on the production so you need to first inform them uh, prior you know you are complete i mean instead of like you are spending a time and uh, sending a final report first inform them right so such kind of a guidelines uh, would be better right so that they know they knows the actual risk and also uh, what are the reports that they are creating which has very critical information uh, like the vulnerabilities the proof of concept of every vulnerability we need to you know have the guidelines for handling such sensitive data right maybe only sending this data over the encrypted communication channel okay uh, so mostly we send all this uh, penetration testing uh, reports um, after encrypting right and sharing the passwords one to one or sharing the password with other communication medium so so those kind of a things guys right and also assess the risk okay so while you're doing the uh, pen testing there might be some sort of a risk associated with the testing activities right maybe like uh, if you are doing it uh, with the real data okay when you when you do the testing who knows the data might get deleted or the data might get tampered right so identify such type of uh, uh, you know areas where you need to prior inform them to take the backup of the database or the entire source code right if something happens let's say you have identified a very critical injection vulnerability where it just modified all the source code or configurations then again it takes time for them to figure out and you know modify it so i mean instead of that maybe it's good to take the backup and keep the uh, things ready right if something goes wrong we can just use that backup and we can up the server right so those kind of a, a risk identification and risk mitigation plans that needs to be you know prepared for any kind of a unexpected outcome during the testing and team coordination so of course uh, like assign the specific roles and responsible to team members if it is a very big engagement you might have a team lead then the penetration testers will be reporting to him every day like what was the status of the pen testing how many vulnerabilities have identified then he will be communicating to his manager okay uh, if it is a like normal pen testing only uh, for one or two applications you might not have a team lead over there or i mean team lead also a technical person who is working with you guys but he is like kind of a senior person who holds a good experience he will also be working on testing it 
okay he just he is taking some kind of a additional roles over there to just to you know look or take the status of the uh, pen testing assessment or to look what type of vulnerabilities have identified or maybe if you get stuck somewhere if you don't know how to project which vulnerability to the client how so he can help you out that's it right and ensure that we are you know putting the right people uh, you know for the right engagement okay as per their skills and expertise level i right? suppose someone is good at uh, network and application and if you are ask him to do the mobile i mean it it won't give the proper outcome right you need the person who knows the mobile pen testing you have to hire and you know bring him bring bring him over the particular assessment right then only we can expect the positive outcome from it so yeah this is also important i think this all the things will be taken care by the manager right so that's the reason um, you have to mention everything uh, in your resume which you know okay if you are mentioning something which you don't know which you haven't worked on earlier if something comes to you and if you say i don't know i won't be doing it or maybe if you are forcefully accepting it like i will do it uh, it won't uh, easily they can figure out right so what were the skills that you are having it make sure uh, you project you know your team in 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 a right way so that you they will assign you or they will put you into the right project right yeah and tools and environment guys so uh, as i said most probably um, you know tools either they give it after procuring and uh, we use it it is depending guys it is depending on the client guys okay sometimes they want us to use our tools only our environment only it is mostly changed as per the client and as per the compliance part right so we use uh, tools like an map metasploit ness some of them are open source and some of them of course required a license wherever there is a license required um of course we need to check you know who is going to bear that cost so these things also will be handled in the this pre engagement uh, phase itself once everything is confirmed we can start with the assessment right so i mean mostly what what we do is uh, whatever i have explained now all these questions will be added in some excel file or uh, uh some kind of a word document or in the conference page and we'll send it to them okay so they will give answers to every question that we are asking to them including the timelines point of a contact details um you know uh, the scope in scope out of the scope uh, tools okay any attacks that they are you know worried about kind of a reports that they are looking for so once all the once they have answered all the questions we will understand uh, you know exactly what they are looking from us right as per that we can start the assessment but once we start the assessment we'll start the assessment by uh, you know information gathering phase right what type of a uh, assessment it is information gathering play is a very crucial role because Uh, the more information you gather uh, it will be more easy for you to identify the issues right even for the hacker as well right he will send most of his time for gathering the information itself right even there is one famous quotation also from the uh, abraham uh, lincoln right when you have a 6 hours to chop down a tree i think he will spend 5 uh, hours to just uh, sharpen his axe right so like information gathering is very very important so there is no certain time uh, i mean when when someone is like attacker is doing it from the outside he will be able to complete it in uh, you know one day or one week one month one year right uh, depending on where he is targeting uh, it is going to take time right but for us uh, like 
we don't you know really spend much time when we are doing the assessment because our point of a contact or when we are connected with the client they will explain us what kind of a technologies are being used um, right it, it is depending on the assessment again and, and our scope is very limited right it could be one or two or maybe it could be a, you know a, a subnet kind of a thing so we'll have the necessary details to proceed with but when he's sitting and outside and starting the, i mean uh, you know hacking uh, as an outsider for him it might take a lot of time right so yeah as i said this is a very critical part guys uh, in whole uh, the penetration testing process um, so here we have two different types of an information gathering so here uh, i am going to cover this information gathering phase um, you know of course practical way only but you know, by keeping the mindset as a hacker or an attacker. Okay, then only you will be able to connect yourself uh, to the pen testing and you will be able to uh, report the findings. Okay, whenever you have, like maybe the information disclosure kind of a vulnerabilities. Right? Um, yeah. So we have two different types of information gathering techniques over here. One is passive and one is active. When you say passive, uh, there won't be direct uh, you know, interaction with the target. Okay. So we will be like gathering the information about the target, mostly looking at the uh, publicly available resources. There is something called uh, OSINT. Have you heard about it anytime? OSINT. Mm. Okay, I'll, I'll show you that. What is OSINT is Open Source Intelligent Gathering, which means uh, gathering all the possible information about the target, which is available to the public. Just, you know, going and gathering the information, which is available to the public. Okay, that is what the OSINT is basically, right? So here, when, when we are doing the passive information gathering tool we use those OSINT tools okay, which can help us to gather the information which is available to the public or which is available to anyone without directly interacting with the target so when we are gathering this information using the passive information gathering tools okay less likely to alert the target of the assessment they might not know okay uh, about the assessment right because we are not knocking them or nor we are gathering the information right sometimes it might not be the true information also <laughs> because we are relying on some other sources to gather the information right uh, that is the passive information gathering and when it comes to active information gathering uh, here we directly communicate with the target system to gather the information okay like we go and knock the targets okay uh, of course they will be uh, knowing okay about uh, i mean our, our traces will get stored into their locks because when you're knocking it of course it will be recorded into the locks and other part suppose if, if you are doing black box testing okay uh, to see um, you know maybe the sensitive information which got disclosed to the outside or to identify the attack surface or uh, maybe you know to perform the passive scans and you know to understand the uh, target so we use this passive otherwise most of the time we start with the active information gathering only because we don't need to bother uh, about the you know risk of detection and all we have the prior permissions to perform the assessment right we have already taken the permissions to start the penetration testing assessment right so what is the objective of you know information gathering right so the objective of information gathering is to identify the target network and structure target network structure and systems and gather the information to plan the next steps in the penetration testing process minimize the risk of detection by the target 
and reduce the focus area. Okay, it's like wherever there is, let's say, very strong security policies, uh, we might not spend more time over there. Right. So yeah. So our our main objective when it comes to performing the information gathering is to identify the uh, vulnerabilities or entry points by understanding the network uh, topology or maybe you know to uh, perform the penetration testing right that is what the main objective is so we'll start our information gathering uh, with a technique called google docking okay uh, so let's start with this what is mean by google docking um, so google docking is a process of uh, identifying or maybe you know extracting the sensitive information from the search engines by applying uh, google filters okay we have something called google filters so we use this google filters uh, to minimize the results according to uh, what exactly we are expecting which means when you go to the google and of course you know the search engines will always crawl the whole internet. They have uh, all the information about the target, right? So the very, very first thing will start with this search engine itself. But when you go and search something in the search engine, you might not get, uh, you know, sensitive information in it, right? So that's where we use this Google docking. So Google docking is also known as Google hacking, which is a technique that uses an advanced search operators in the Google search engines to find the information that is not easily accessible through the standard search queries. Right? What we do, we use this advanced search operators and we apply this advanced search operators on the search engines to narrow down the result. For an example, okay, uh, let's say I wanted to uh, identify uh, some kind of a hidden information in the website or some of the exposed systems and servers okay i i wanted to find it maybe like internal login pages uh, maybe you know i want to see all the documents which are published by them okay hidden directories or the sensitive uh, versions of the various services right so those kind of information you cannot find it easily into the internet like search engines when you directly you go and search it so that's where we use this google docs okay so this google docs can help us to identify the sensitive information vulnerable web pages and then the misconfigured uh, server side network okay so all of this information we can able to find it with the help of this google docking techniques so here we have the some of the example queries that we can use it i can also show you uh, the practical uh, example for you right so let's let's say you need to identify the login pages of a specific website if you go and type in the google like i need the login pages are you going to get them maybe let's say i need the login page of uh, what I will like login page of Uber. Okay. So we got one. Okay. Um, but we also got the other results from Google Play Store, uh, you know, Pinterest, Apple you know, different, different GitHub, different, different sources, right? But when you wanted to minimize your results and when you wanted to like narrow down your results according to your search query, you can use this Google Docs, okay? To use this Google Docs, okay, you should have a basic understanding of the website structure. When I say website structure, uh, okay, let me open this website, okay? So 
this is called as a title correct the one which i am showing you this is called as a title and this is of course the host name okay this is like the entire url right and yeah i think if you know this basic things you'll be able to use this google docs now so if you see a google doc now in url okay login which means any url okay wherever it is mentioned as a login it's going to give the results for us like in url i need login you can see now wherever in the url there is which is mentioned as a login login okay even if i open it i can see that login 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 you got my point so when i use this advanced uh, you know operator called in url then login it is giving the results to me wherever the login is mentioned in the url now here you can apply your target okay website okay here what i am using i am using site operator what is the site operator site operator is going to restrict the results only belongs to the mentioned domain now i wanted to see all the login pages in the url of maybe a specific target okay you can mention site then let's say uber.com okay you can see now the results are very limited that to only the information is belongs to uber and i can see all the login pages or wherever the login is mentioned into the url okay i can see login is mentioned login yeah login is mentioned somewhere yeah here it is right you got my point so what this google docs or advanced search operators are helping us they are helping us to narrow down our results right so from where can i get this all the google docs right so if you just type google docs uh okay there are okay there may be list there are a lot of google docs guys <clears throat> These are some of them. Like in title, if you like to see something uh, in the title, like this is a title, right? You can mention the one which we have used now is in URL, in text, define, site, phone book, maps, book, info, okay, link related, and you have an examples also how to use it, right? Even I have also mentioned the couple of examples over here so when you would like to find the login pages this particular google doc is going to help you maybe if you would like to find the exposed email addresses you can search like this in text and wherever it is mentioned it in the text okay like in text okay which email addresses let's say at the rate uber.com it's the same one right index yeah uber.com so maybe if i open it i might find the email addresses over there because of course it could be support or it could be something but yeah i'll get it whichever is mentioned by themselves in the internet 
okay maybe if i would like to identify some of the sensitive files like pdf files which are published by them which are having a word called confidential or you can also apply this for a specific site okay let's use this correct so now let's use first site operator to restrict the results of let's say microsoft.com okay so in this particular scope i need to see the file type with a pdf okay whatever the pdf type pdf files that they are uh, published to the internet okay in the microsoft websites we'll get all the pdfs i think it's still running Yeah, you can see all the PDF results are here for me. Out of this, I need maybe, uh, I mean, inside the PDF, let's say I wanted to see wherever it is mentioned as a passwords or confidential. Okay, whichever you uh, feel, you know, you can just search for it. Yeah, you can see uh, we have few PDF files wherever uh, it is mentioned as a password. If you maybe open and check it out, I mean, I'm just uh, you know helping you helping you to understand how these queries can be constructed. But in the real time, if you would like to know how these queries you know will be used to identify the sensitive information. Uh, Okay, you need to first, uh, you know, understand few real-time Google Docs. Okay, so this is published by Microsoft. I think somewhere it is mentioned as a password in this document. Yeah, you can see multiple places it is mentioned. Right. So likewise, we can narrow down our result. If you would like to see the latest Google Docs, you can go to exploit okay uh, google hacking database which is maintained by the exploit-db.com here you can find various types of google docs for uh, you know different types so for an example here you can see the category so this category is going to tell you what type of a google doc it is it is going to give the various online devices, it seems. This is going to give the files contain the passwords. Okay, they are looking into index of page, which is in title of a website, and then etc SSH file. I mean, you have a filter over here. You can apply a filter category. You can even, uh, in, let's say if you'd like to only see the Google Docs which are related to uh, files contain passwords. You can click on it. Okay, you have various Google Docs which are published by the different security researchers. Okay, someone is taking the source as a paste bin. Okay, someone is maybe looking into index of files, right? So you can take an example of any one of these things. Okay, let's say I'm taking this example of this. Copy, paste, go. No. So this Google Doc is like, it's checking for index of page in the title, okay, the server index page. And then inside that, etc SSH file, right? So we got one university result over here. There are a lot of things are there. Most of them are like schools, universities, educational portals. See, we got the index of page, which is entitled. And then inside that we have ET, etc SSH file, right? We can see SSH configuration file over here. So how this SSH is being configured. And we might also find the credentials if in case it is mentioned somewhere, right? If you have the credentials, we can directly 
get into it. Of course, we can get to know the configurations over here. Okay, max tries, uh, permit root login, as it seems. Okay, if someone is trying to log in from the outside as a root user, it is going to allow them to log in. So mostly this configuration should be disabled, but it is enabled. What version of SSH is being used, right? In which port it is running. So all the configuration details, you know, I, I was able to find it. And also there are a lot of things like uh, we have a, a keys, RSA, DSA keys also there, right? So likewise, we can find the sensitive information. Right, with the help of the Google Docs. Now it's just like uh, you can apply your target domain over here and see. Okay, whether I mean if if it is if this is suitable to you, uh, your your target, then you might find the information, or else no. Right, yeah. So they start. I mean they they just use such type of a Google Docs to you know identify the what sensitive information it could be server address uh, you know uh, internal files without proper uh, permissions and anything which is you know disclosed to the internet which has some kind of a sensitive information in it right so here we have the some of the examples for you to you know understand about this uh, google docking queries right uh, any questions over here? Yes, guys. Is it clear or someone has any dots? Yes, I want to hear from you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. So, is it clear for you? Like, the concept of Google Docking is clear to you? Yes. Okay. So, yeah. You can refer this Google Hacking Database to understand uh, how they have constructed right? Even if you have a certain uh, product, you know, which is disclosing information in a, or, you know, in a way. So you can also write your own Google Docs to find such type of devices, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you can try with this some of the examples which are mentioned over here. And let me know, guys, if in case if you have any questions also, right? So how do we uh, need to prevent it? Um, of course, you know, once you identify such type of a sensitive information, you need to tell them to uh, remove it, right? Because it is exposed to the internet where the crawlers are identified and indexed it. We have applied this Google Docs to identify it. Maybe when you search, as a normal user, you are not able to find it, right? So make sure that we do the proper configurations and security practices to ensure the sensitive directories and files are not indexed by the search engines using the robot.txt files. We need to disable if there is any kind of a sensitive pages. It could be admin pages or any other sensitive information which is there in the website and implement the proper access controls and authentication mechanisms for the sensitive areas of the uh, web page, right? Only uh, in authorized people should have an access to that. Okay, it should not expose to the outsider. Even if there are anything which is exposed to the internet, let's say admin pages or, or something, it should pop up with them to, uh, you know, provide the credentials, right? I mean, if they're trying to access some sensitive information, which is uh, which requires the authorization it should not directly accessible to them right maybe internal let's say now we have seen ssh uh, uh, keys 
SSH configuration file. So when someone is trying to access such kind of a things, it should give a pop up to them. Hey, prove yourself who you are, right? So because of not having the authentication access control mechanism, uh, you know, when it is open, we were able to access it. And the, we have to perform the regular audits and monitoring. Okay. And you can also use some of the security headers like X robots tag to control how the search engine index your content. Okay, because whatever you publish, uh, that will be indexed directly into the various search engines, right? To control that index, we have the security headers like no index or no follow. Uh, such type of a things can be uh, used for the sensitive pages. So those pages will not be indexed directly into the internet. Even when someone is trying to search it, they won't be able to get it, right? And also the last one, implementing the input validation sign sanitization to ensure that the user input is properly validated and sanitized, sanitized to prevent the exposure of sensitive data through search engine queries, right? Maybe like some kind of a errors and all. Yeah. Uh, next thing is subdomain enumeration, like identifying the, uh, identifying the list of targets Okay, like domains and subdomains which are used by the uh, target. So this is also one of the crucial step in this entire reconnaissance in the reconnaissance phase, right? Because it helps us to identify the potential attack surface, like uh, the subdomain names, okay, which can reveal a different parts of the company infrastructure, such as like uh, development, staging, uh, admin panels, etc. And also, we can also identify the associated IP addresses with those domains okay, where uh, they have hosted, right? It can also reveal the additional uh, you know, entry points for us. Maybe if you target only one specific IP address, uh, I mean, I'm just giving a view as an attacker perspective. So for them, let's say maybe only they target the main domain, they were not able to find anything important. So what they do is they just try to identify all the list of IP addresses, assets which are owned by the organization. They try with the different ways to get into it because there might not be, um, you know, they, they might find, they might not find well security over there, right? So they knock the other things. And also internal applications, right? Services, which are not intended to uh, access to by the public and technologies frameworks, you know, whatever they are using in each and every domain IP, we will also easily get to know about the technology stack details, right? For an example, let's say if you identify such type of a uh, subdomains like api.example.com, devexample.com, adminexample.com, you will easily okay figure out, okay, first one is related to API services. Second one is related to, it could be development environment. Third one is maybe kind of a potential admin interface. So likewise, we, I mean, attacker, or we can also easily understand, right? Yeah. So what tools we use it for performing this subdomain enumeration is, we have tools like uh, Sublister, you know, MS and Subfinder, even virus total is also there. So I'll, I'll Teach you this you know how do we do it right so for this uh, okay we should okay let's use the tool sublister
so this sublister okay uh, is actually not available directly in the linux operating system we need to download it so so this tool is open source tool it's available into the github so we just need to git clone this particular repository into the linux and then we are good to use it uh, so as i said this is a os int tool okay open source intelligent gathering tool when you give a target to this tool it's going to gather the subdomains of a target by looking into various data sources like google yahoo bing baidu and also netcraft virus total threat cloud okay into all these different uh, sources right so to install this tool uh, first you need to git clone this entire repository it's a python based tool you can see here dot py even you have uh, the installation command over here git clone this particular path right so we'll do the same thing so even you can also follow the same steps to do it log into the linux operating system and open the browser go to the sublister github page anyway i have already opened it in my local host now what i'll do is i'll just simply open the terminal and okay let me take the root access first okay yeah once i have taken the root access uh, let me create a directory called uh, okay let's directly git clone here so go here copy this command and paste it control shift to v yeah done so the git clone is completed okay i was able to clone this entire uh, tool into my local host you can also do the same thing and if you give ls you will be able to see that there is one directory created called as a sublist so get into it like cd sublister and give ls you will see that tool over here okay sublister dot py so before we run this tool let's understand what all the different options are available in this tool okay so those options even you can also able to see them here in the github repository under the usage uh, documentation and you you have various examples also over here at how to how to run this tool karke so it has it is a python based tool first start with python and then uh, sublister.py and then you can give h this is going to give you the options okay which are available in the tool so any tool which you are running it in the linux operating system will have help option okay so help is your like friend uh, it is going to help you out about the syntax structure various options which are available to run any tool suppose let's say i want to run an map but i don't know about the options which you know i need to use it you can just use nmap and uh, hyphen h it will give you all the options to you okay which uh, you can see here which which uh, you know switch or options for what purpose similarly here okay for us when i am running this tool sublister i can also use h to see the available options in it so as it is a python based tool python is pre installed in the linux operating system you can see we have python 2 2.733.11 so let's use latest version python 3 then you can call this tool uh, sublister.py and give h okay help to see the available options in this tool so hyphen h is for help d is for giving the target domain to enumerate its subdomains then uh, when you would like to perform the brute force with the list of uh, you know 
uh, directory names you can also do that uh, with hyphen b you can also run this on a specific port okay maybe instead of 443 or 80 if you'd like to run it on something else you can also do that um, then you can if you if you'd like to see the verbose information okay what it is doing in the background okay that real information if you'd like to see it you can also enable it and uh, number of threads you can define when you're running the brute force attack with the help of the subroute tool which is integrated to it and as it is a OSINT tool uh, if you'd like to gather the information only using a specific search engine you can also define that or else default it's going to pick up all the available search engines then saving the output so for us let's run this tool python 3 and then sublister dot py here you can give hyphen hyphen domain or hyphen d that is fine you can give the target here okay let's say my target i am uh, giving it over here has a uh, which one will give it okay let's give it as a certified hacker dot com and if you like to save it hyphen o maybe like subdomains dot txt right yeah so i'm using the syntax hope the syntax is clear to you uh, this is a python based tool i'm using python the tool is in python so i've just called it and inside this tool uh, we know that we have an option to define the target and they save the output like this and i'm running it i am not defined any specific search engine over here so it's just looking into all the search engines and it's going to give the results for me right we just need to wait for some time okay so it is going to give all the subdomains of uh, this target domain okay so this is one thing simultaneously let me also show you other thing where the virus total is blocking okay so let's go to virus total so virus total is like uh, kind of a malware uh, analysis uh, website wherever whenever you find any malicious link file and if you would like to identify if it is, has any malware in it or not okay you can go to wires total which means they have a legit uh, websites urls also right so what we do is we go to the virus total and we will go to the search here we can give our target domain okay let me give maybe uber.com right so once you give this uber.com there are 93 different antivirus um, antiviruses which are integrated to it everything says it's a clean okay our intention is to not to check whether it is malicious or not our intention is to identify the subdomains so you can go to relations under the relations you can see we have a subdomains as it is like kind of a big company they have 521 subdomains you can see here you can see help under stage uber.com this is belongs to cloudflare legacy legacy edge test so by looking at this subdomains we can get to know which domain you use used for what purpose you can see this is for guest payment okay payment uh, orchard staging credit card staging right so we can also get to know what domain is used for what purpose and also where it is hosted the list of ip addresses which are belongs to the target understood Yeah, guys. Okay, I know we are running out of the time. Just I'll, you know, explain this and I'll finish it off here. You can see, so it has given 41 different subdomains of the target. Here we didn't get the IP addresses. Of course, we can also perform the uh, scans on them so that it is gonna give the IP addresses for us. But right now, we got 
the list of subdomains which are used by the target right so we have the other tools also i request you to go and uh, explore about this tool okay uh, so those tools are also available in the linux operating system okay i have shown you two examples to you with sublister and virus total you can uh, explore the other tools this is like kind of an assignment for you right so yeah so these are some of the mitigations guys right so anyway you cannot restrict uh, you know in terms of exposing this subdomains to the internet right only thing that we can do it is implement the dns security this is an extension for dns to prevent all the dns related attacks like dns spoofing and dns cache poisoning attacks and also make sure that you have an inventory where you monitor all the subdomains and audit them okay which are uh, active which are not active you know which is used to where so it's a very big organization it is kind of a tough for uh, them to uh, keep track of it of course they should have and also restrict uh, the access with sensitive uh, servers and subdomains with the help of the uh, you know security uh, security things like uh, having the firewalls and access control list and make sure you also validate the dns records carefully wherever it is mentioned as star dot you know something.com uh, can be unintentionally exposed uh, internal services and also perform uh, a regular assessments like using such type of a tools to see which are exposed uh, into the internet what kind of an information is hosted in it right yeah <clears throat> so as of now we just covered two different concepts right one is with the google docking uh, to find the uh, to narrow down the results according to our search or to find the sensitive information and the second thing is identifying the subdomains of the target right hope these two things are clear i request you to you know go and uh, spend some time on this two topic and uh, make yourself comfortable right so that uh, we'll discuss about the other information gathering techniques in the tomorrow session yeah, let me know guys if you have any questions, I can take it up.